Alright guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is The Four Dimensional Nightmare by J.G. Ballard. Um, it's a short story collection, it's got uh, a few in here, let me see which ones we have got. Um, so we've got The Voices of Time, The Sound Sweep, Prima Belladonna, Studio 5 The Stars, which is really interesting because that kind of covered like the use of technology to write poetry basically, and then what happens when they then can't rely on the technology and they have to rely on people again to write new poems. The Garden of Time, The Cage of Sand, The Watchtowers, and Chronopolis. And Chronopolis was probably my favourite story of the lot. Um, it deals with like a society in which time and is like outlawed and so clocks are illegal and stuff. Um, and just how that affects society and whatnot. Overall, some really great ideas in this one. Um, I've already been enjoying Ballard a lot from what I've read recently, and this just kind of confirms in my head that he's probably going to be a new favourite author for me. Overall, 3.75, maybe even a 4 out of 5, and would recommend. Alright guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie. This is Colonel Race book number four, I think. Um, although it says on my spine of it that it's a Poirot, but it's not. Basically, somebody uh, commits suicide, or uh, ostensibly commits suicide, by drinking cyanide from a glass of uh, champagne. And then everybody kind of sort of sets the same meeting up again with all of the same people there. And then the same thing happens, somebody dies after drinking something, and um, yeah. We investigate. Colonel Race novel, pretty good Agatha Christie book um, in general. Uh, yeah, I would probably give this a solid 4 out of 5. And it would be a decent one to start off with, even if you're new to it, you know. So um, keep your eyes peeled for this one in the second-hand shops. Alright guys, uh, two, two books to mention today. The first is The Martian by Andy Weir, which I reread via audiobook. I must say I definitely preferred just reading it. I didn't think the audiobook was very good. Um, the narrator just, his voice grated on me. It was kind of too American to be honest. But also, there was an, uh, an Asian character. I think he was Indian, but he might have been Pakistani. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I can't remember any of their names. I remember Mark Watney. I can't remember any of their other names. The the Asian guy, he was Vit, Vitnam or something, I think it was. Um, but I can't remember. But yeah, the guy, every time he had dialogue, the narrator like put on an Indian voice, and he's clearly like just a white American. So it was kind of uncomfortable, um, especially when you think like, didn't Arpu get cancelled from The Simpsons, even though. He's generally been heralded as quite a good representation, like quite a positive, I don't know, whatever. I don't want to get into politics. So, um, yeah, the audiobook was a disappointment, but overall, I, you know, I still enjoy the story. I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 when I first read it. I think this audiobook reread dropped it down to a 4 out of 5, um, but still very much worth reading. I don't agree with the people who say you should listen to The Martian on audiobook. I don't think it works as well. I think it's uh, much better to read it as a book. Uh, my enjoyment is like book, movie. Actually, the book and movie are kind of tied. They're both pretty good and they're both quite true like to each other. Obviously, well, obviously the movie's true to the book. But um, the audio book, not so much. But yeah, it was all right. And then I read The Stars Like Dust by Isaac Asimov. And this is um, kind of like a sci-fi diplomatic political thriller, I guess. So... It's got all that like political um, intrigue, except obviously it's set amongst the stars, which is quite cool. It's very Asimov. Uh, I did enjoy it. It kind of flagged after the second half. I thought it had a really strong start and then kind of petered out a little bit. But I, uh, I gave it a, a 3.5 out of 5, and it's all right. And if you're an Asimov fan, you're probably going probably gonna to like it. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, I've got a few books to update you on. The first one is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. Um, it's kind of an old school favourite of mine and I reread it uh, via audiobook. My original, the first time I read it, I gave it a 5 out of 5, no question. With this one, I gave it probably a 4, maybe a 4.25 out of 5. Um, but it was an enjoyable experience. The narrator was good. There was some music in it as well. It was only about four and a half hours. And it's one of those stories that just really makes you think... Um, and I like the way that like science, it's like um, it's like a sort of, it's horror, but it's when horror meets science. It's not even like science fiction, it's, well I, well I guess not, it's hard to say. As an overall rule though, uh, yeah, I Am Legend, cracking, way better than the movie. Don't, well I mean watch the movie if you want, but read the book as well because the, the book's amazing. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed the read. Then we have a couple of others. So I finished reading Hyperion by Dan Simmons. So this was my bedtime book for a while. I actually read this as a buddy read with Al from Big Hard Books and Classics and a few other people, although I basically fell behind with it, I think. Um, 
it just wasn't really for me. And this is the second Dan Simmons book that I've read, and I've not enjoyed either of them. So he's not got a great success rate. Um, but I do want to read the ter the Terror. I think it's called the Terror. Um, and I mean, I've got all of his books on my wish list. It's just after having read a couple of them, I'm not so sure that I'm going to enjoy them. Um, there were sections of this that I enjoyed. The problem is that there were like eight sections, and I only really enjoyed like two of them. So make of that as you will. Overall, I gave it a three out of five, but I can see why some people like it. It just wasn't really for me. Hello, I have quite a few books to talk to you about today. So I guess the first one is uh, Ian Dersher, William Shakespeare's The Empire Striketh Back. Oh, I'm not even in the shot here. Let's, let's move a bit ahead. So this is literally like a play version of The Empire Strikes Back. Um, so, you know, we've got various scenes. Let me find something here. Um, so here we have the exchange between Lando and Han, for example, where like Han's like, yeah, you're a real hero. So uh, Chewbacca goes, Aah! and then Lando says, cease, I have done all that I may do. For certain, I am sorry I could not do better yet than this, but I do have enough vexations here. And then Han says, oh, thou great man. Thou art a hero, and thy tale shall ere upon the lips of lesser folk be told. Throughout all history it shall be writ. Behold, great Lando of Calrissian, a man who ever served his comrades well. And then Lando in an aside says, This stings my soul, yet no more can I do than hold my head up high and plan what's next. And um, he says in the uh, outro to this, actually, that he uh, because he gets to give some of the, the characters these asides he could kind of go into their minds a bit more and um and he said that like it's quite cool for lando because you don't really get to see that side of his character which is true i also like that yoda's dialogue is written in the form of haiku um overall i would give this probably a four out of five maybe a 4.25 out of five it is a little bit gimmicky but actually it does genuinely hold up in and of itself as a play and like if you had you know a school you could put this on as a play just from what he provides here and that in itself I think makes it you know worthwhile and a piece of art in its own right really. I also read Creative Blindness by Dave Trott so this is a non-fiction book and Dave Trott has a very unique way of writing. I'm going to do a full review of this where I highlight some of the different passages. Um, he writes in these really short sentences and yeah this is basically non-fiction where he takes real life examples and shows you like how you know to be creative I guess so for example um, Girl Scouts in California wanted to sell more cookies so what did they do they set up shop outside cannabis dispensaries they realized they were uh, they were going outside supermarkets before and it's like well people would just buy their cookies from the supermarket you know whereas um, if they set up shop outside of a cannabis dispensary they're literally getting people who are going to be there's no other cookies on sale at the dispensary so they you know they've got the unique product there and it's the perfect target market because let's face it they're going to want a cookie later aren't they you know so uh, yeah four out of five maybe 4.25 again um really solid uh definitely want to read if you if you follow any kind of creative pursuit uh definitely want to read i mean it's, it's geared more towards marketing but um you can kind of relate that back to you if you make films i mean even if you're watching as a but you know there's probably stuff you can can take from this and then I read The Institute by Stephen King. So um, this is, I mean, it's very Stranger Things-y, um, but that in itself is very Firestarter-y, which is another Stephen King novel. And this is quite a lot like that as well. Um, but it is very enjoyable. I mean, I found that I didn't have enough to say to make like a full review, um, but I enjoyed it, you know? And um, it's probably one that I'd probably put in my top, like, quarter of Stephen King's books. It uh, definitely shows that he's still on form at the moment. Just as I say, there just wasn't really enough for me to do um, a full review of it. I think it looks to me like they've made a bit of a cock up here on the cover design as well. Look at this. Look how close the N is to the uh, spine there. Like I had problems with that with me when I got my proof copies shipped and then I fixed it, you know? <laughs> so that's a bit strange. The rear is fine. It's centered in the rear. But it's not centered at the front here. It's too far along to the right. I mean, they're cutting it fine as it is. I would probably have reduced the size of that a bit, you know? But, I mean, sure, they, they want to shout that it's Stephen King. I think it is, look, the, the spine here as well is slightly too far over this side. So I think the whole thing is just slightly too far over to the right because um, when you print a book and you design the cover of the wraparound, 
you kind of have it like that in um, Photoshop, you know? So they made a boo-boo there. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 now. I was going to give it 4.25, but I've done that for the last two books. And the cover design lets it down. Hello, I have some books to update you on. Uh, this is a note to myself, which I'll leave in the video for shits and giggles, because why not? To double check that I have um, re reviewed Stephen King, The Institute. Uh, after that, I then read Ted Hughes' Crow. Uh, from the Life and Songs of Crow, and I really enjoyed this actually. I did say, I've done a separate re review of this where I read some of the poems that I enjoyed the most. I did say, um, I mean, I, I I can't really think of Ted Hughes without thinking of, about Sylvia Plath putting her head in the oven, so I, I don't really like Ted Hughes, but I, I separated the art from the artist, and actually the art I did enjoy here. I thought these were some cracking poems. Very fun, very silly. Uh, I gave this probably a four out of five, I reckon, uh, and would recommend. Uh, yeah. Go check out my review if you want to listen to like some of the poems being read as well to get a get feel for whether you might like the poetry style. What do we have next? Okay, then I read... Then I... Jesus, what? Yeah, then I read uh, Santa is Coming to Tamworth. This is a children's book, um, specifically about my hometown. So, um, we have some, like, it's got all the little, you know, uh, so for example there, Santa's going over the church of St. Editha, that's where we used to have to go to uh, every Christmas at school to sing choir and stuff. Uh, there were big chimneys in Coat and Green, that's where my dad lives, and small chimneys in Kettlebrook. He squeezed down thin chimneys in Hockley and plummeted down fat chimneys in Hopwis. So these are all like the small little towns, so uh, yeah, it's just really cute, because it's Tamworth, has got like 80,000 people, so it's not like a huge town. So it's a bit like if there was a Santa who's coming to High Wycombe, which there probably is. Uh, I would give this 4 out of 5, man. I thought it was pretty good for what it was. I was impressed with how they personalised it. It actually felt as though... I was even wondering, like, how they did these? Because it, it feels more... In, it feels like the person who's written it has visited Tamworth. So, if they did that, like, just by Google searches and stuff, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, maybe see if there's one for your area. 4 out of 5. So I've just finished reading If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. I will be doing a full review of this book, um, but basically it's kind of translated Japanese literary fiction uh, about a guy who kind of makes a deal with the devil to keep losing uh, something different from the world each day in, in exchange for like an extra day of life when he's uh, terminally ill. It was a pretty good read. I guess it wasn't quite what I was expecting from it, but I don't really know how I would describe it myself either. Um, but it's quite short and it's, it is just one of those books that I think has got, you know, good appeal for everyone I think most people would enjoy it I gave it four out of five and I would uh, definitely read some more of this author's work um, and I have tabbed out to do a review as well um, I don't know yeah it was just good it was just good but it wasn't great that's all I can really say on that one okay so wrap up so first of all I've uh, finished reading or rereading different seasons by audio uh, so and I've listened to it over about the last three months so most recently I listened to the body um, and then the Shawshank Redemption I read quite a while back, and I can't remember why, there was some reason I really wanted to reread it, so I did. Uh, but yeah, basically I've finished off, uh, I finished off the other two earlier this month, uh, The Breathing Method and Apt Pupil. Uh, Apt Pupil is my favourite of the lot. My ranking for them goes, Apt Pupil is my favourite, probably then Shawshank Redemption, Breathing Method, uh, and then The Body at the bottom. And The Body is what became Stand By Me, which I've never seen. But yeah, overall, I still really enjoy it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Then, I read Horrible Science, Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSores. This is a horrible science book. Um, it's not like, because the original was uh, Hor Horrible Histories, which was Terry Deary. Um, and he wasn't, I guess, involved in this. So the humour was similar. It was very similar, but it wasn't quite the same magic. But um, it was interesting to learn a lot more about the origins of flight. And funnily enough, I've been having a... <laughs> conversation uh, about apparently nobody really knows why aeroplanes fly except they explain why they fly in this book so yeah <laughs> all right a few books to update you on so I can't remember whether I did this one or not um, I almost forgot to do it I did my review of this this is Grey J Wall The Sound of Revolution Beat Poems and Anxious Gasps the best way to give you a feel for whether you might like it is to read one of the poems to you. And uh, actually I happened to open up on one that I quite liked. I remember doing this in my review. So this is We. We live for cheap supermarkets with international stock. The reticent middle class of Middle England. We worry about the wars and the parking charges. The discriminatory nature of our government's bills. 
We squabble when the money is tight and bicker over our working class ancestry. We are civilly disobedient when the situation calls, and obediently civil to lax waiters and traffic wardens. We cry in private when our loved ones die from inexplicable cancers, and look into the eyes of our pets for condolence. We have friends on the continent, we are citizens of the world, yet we avoid certain streets in our beloved hometown. The fairy lights in the garden provide a grotto to know God, whilst our scented candles enhance our well-being. We contemplate the gym, yet it remains a foreign land part-time Buddhists with Catholic guilt. We only discuss the other faiths behind closed doors for fear of offending or being considered politically incorrect. We log on to our social media in fear that the virtual world might move on without us. Hashtag LOL WTF. Pills to keep us awake and pills to help us sleep. Therapy is the new normality, caffeine free and embracing our anxiety. Our realness is never discussed, our distress remains publicly concealed. We are 21st century alone and dying history in the making, a minor experiment in paranoia and as normal as the rest. Our past rewritten by paedophile TV presenters, press, delete, erase, eradicate, reinvent. We are okay, can't complain. The future is bright, the future is unwritten. Turn off the lights when you leave. Life is a game show and love is the prize. We are all extras and the camera is rolling. Everything is available on catch-up, freeview and pay-to-play, photoshopped and auto-tuned to within an inch. Text me sometime. Smiley face, L-U-V-X. I think that means love, kiss. Uh, yeah, I gave this 3.75 out of 5. Because, um, basically because it's beat poems and anxious gasps, I already had high expectations going in. I, I do love his author bio here though. Gray J. Wall is a poet, lamographer and songwriter from St Albans, UK. As a regular performer at venues and festivals, both at home and around continental Europe, his work is often inspired by those travels along with global issues, anxiety, red wine and cats. Then I read Frightful Flight, Horrible Science by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSauls. This is a horrible histories book, a bit gimmicky. I think I reviewed it, so I'm not going to review it again. And then I read Switch Bitch by Roald Dahl. And this is a collection of uh, four short stories. It was first published in uh, Playboy, which tells you a lot about them. They're all about sex. Like, uh, the, uh, oh, what was it called? Was it um, The Great Switcheroo? Is about two men who pretend to be each other. The Great Switcheroo is about two men who pretend to be each other uh, and they want to wife swap without their wives knowing about it. And so they they make this plan, they go to each other's house when the wife isn't in and they have all the lights off and they learn to navigate around the house with blindfolded so they know where everything is. They've, uh, they're going to unplug the lamp when they go into the room so she can't turn the lamp on in the middle of it. What, what else did they do? Oh yeah, they're going to cut their finger deliberately and put a plaster over it so they can say, look darling, I cut my finger, so that then when they swap, the swappy and the swapper will both have plasters on their fingers so the wife will be like, oh, it definitely is my husband. And then they're just gonna, you know, get, get a bit of jiggy jiggy with, their, with each other's wives. So that's the plan. And they meet up and have a bunch of whiskey and they're talking to each other about how they do it. And one of them's like, good God, man, you take, you take that long? I get it all over in five minutes. I think she love, loves the, 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 the vitality of my thrusting. He didn't write that, that was just me. Uh, so yeah, the one's like, oh yeah, we take like 20 minutes. And the other one's like, oh, we take five minutes. So they swap over and then they swap back. And the morning after, the guy who normally takes five minutes, his wife is like, oh, darling, I've been wanting to tell you for 20 years, but I've been so sexually unsatisfied and I wasn't going to tell you, but then last night, last night, I don't know what came over you, but it was, it was good. And then he's, I can't remember how it ends actually. That's basically the end. Oh yeah, then he sees his neighbor walking along the street, whistling to himself and looking very pleased. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, oh, and the first one of these was pretty racist as well. I mean, I guess they were adult stories and of a time. Um, I actually still enjoyed it. Despite that, I think, um, I mean, I don't have too much of a problem overlooking it. Uh, I do think it's a shame. I think they affect it negatively. But overall, the stories in it were still pretty good. Uh, and probably four out of five. Um, and definitely worth reading if you're curious as to what, like, Roald Dahl writing about some weird sex shit would be like. One other book that I read that I think I forgot to wrap up was Aesop's Fables, The Complete Fables. I actually don't know where my copy of it is gone, but uh, I read and enjoyed it. I read it a little bit at a time, probably 10 to 12 fables a night is my bedtime book. And I think that was a good way to do it. My favourite was The Camel That Shat in the River. Uh, definitely encourage looking that one up. 
Uh, I was actually surprised by how few of the fables I'd heard before. Most of them were new to me. Um, there's only like maybe three or four that are like really, really famous ones. Um, but yeah, definitely worth reading and you can you can apply a lot of it to modern life. So four out of five. So I read Montmartre Cero by uh, uh, Erle Mouche. Uh, this is a French BD, a bandes dessinaire, which is like a graphic novel. It's basically about like a couple of friends, a cat and a dog. Ne laissez pas le serpent m'approcher. Don't let the snake approach me. <laughs> so as you can see, it's um, you know pretty been pretty good for teaching me dialect and just improve my French. Uh, and it's been a bedtime book as well. So I've been because it's um, essentially it's weird because it kind of has like stories within the story, but you can also read it just from start to finish uh, as a linear narrative as well. So it's really up to you how you go about doing it. But um, I did like six pages a night or something and because um, I assume it was like originally published as like a daily in a newspaper or something like that but I did enjoy it I would give it a four out of five and then I read The Golden Apples of the Sun by Ray Bradbury uh, I'm gonna be doing a fuller review on this as you can see from the tabs uh, but basically this is a short story collection by Ray Bradbury one of the you know fathers of modern sci-fi uh, lots of kind of well, it's weird because it's, as with most short stories, there are you know it's it's a mixed bag. So some of the stories are great, some of some of them are not so great. And actually, I found that I there were more duds for me than uh, successes than like big hits. But the ones that hit were really good. So for example, there was one which like uh, a photographer was uh, taking photos of celebrities uh, like in poor people's houses, and the poor people were like, "For you, this is just like a game. For us, this is the way we live and stuff." And I just thought really interesting in the way it looks at like class and um, wealth differences and actually you know still relevant today because of it but uh, overall I give it like a pretty middle of the road 3.5 out of 5 it was all right I'm glad I read it and I will continue to work my way through Ray Bradbury yeah, 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 yeah. hello I have some books to let you know about um, I finished reading Vertigo to go by Brendan Booth Jones this is a poetry collection I thought it was very good indeed um, I don't know, I just flicked it at random, so I'm going to read you one of them here. Uh, January the 1st, 3am. For Dad. Groggy from bong hits. No more wasting time on petty self-needling. No more, no more standing lonely in the kitchen, eating pasta from the pot for a hug of carbohydrates. Radiant ferris wheel of amphetamines. Never, ever again. No mask, no casket, no fake flowers of half-hearted sparkling. No, no dope, swizz pingers or disco biscuits. No stocks or shares in falling foes. No stacking it down the stairs of friendship. No hiding behind news feeds and digital thrills. No more wallowing in wounds and bruises. Less popes, more poets. Poems. Always more poems. More yes, more hope, more looking up, more reason to call myself your son. That is so strange because I'm literally currently reading a video called uh, Meet the Antipope. That's uh, from 42 on YouTube, by the way. Um, also, it should be fewer popes, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I enjoyed it. I gave it a pretty solid 3.75, maybe even a 4 out of 5. I then reread Night Watch by Terry Pratchett. So this is one of the Discworld um, City Watch books. Uh, in this one, actually, Sam Vimes sort of there's an accident involving magic, and he gets sent back in time to the past, and he kind of accidentally becomes his own mentor. Um, history has changed, but it's explained that um, as long as like the end result is the same, time has a remarkable way of kind of coming back together. I think it's one of my favourite City Watch books because it takes us like back in time in Ankh-Morpork to the time when like Mad Lord Snapcase was the patrician and stuff so overall very solid entry I'm, I'm gonna give it a five out of five man uh, all of the Sea Watch books are fantastic so just start at the beginning and work your way through them but uh, very glad that I reread that and then I also read The Pearl and Burning Bright by uh, John Steinbeck so I have it in this great pan edition it's actually got the two of them together even though for this purpose, I'm going to count them as individual books because they are published individually. Um, so yeah, I am. Yeah, I mean, Burning Bright was all right. Uh, the Pearl I thought was really enjoyable. It actually reminded me of The Old Man and the Sea, except I didn't particularly like The Old Man and the Sea, uh, whereas I thought The Pearl was fantastic. So um, yeah, I would probably. I, in fact, yeah, I've read more Hemingway, but I so far from what I've read, I like Steinbeck, uh, his work more than Hemingway. We won't go into them as people because that's just, we'll be here forever, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall probably 3.75, 4 out of 5. Uh, it wasn't as good as the short stories that I've read. Maybe The Pearl was, but Burning Bright, not so much. Um, and also Of Mice and Men was just fantastic. But I, I am looking forward to reading more Steinbeck. 
Alright, just the one book to update you guys on today, and that is The Pearl and Burning Bright by Ch John Steinbeck. There are two stories in this. Uh, the Pearl was my favourite of the two. Burning Bright, um, but it's a powerful human drama of two men, one sterile of body, one sterile of mind, and a woman driven to infidelity to keep her husband's love. So basically the subject matter, I'm just not really interested in it. I mean, it was well written enough, I just didn't really care for it too much. The Pearl, I enjoyed a lot more. Uh, it was almost reminiscent of The Old Man in the Sea uh, by Ernest Hemingway, except I enjoyed this a lot more uh, because I, I feel like it was a bit grittier and it sort of, it investigates some of the darker aspects of human life, like the way that people take advantage of each other and the way like a, a seemingly lawful man can become a killer. Um, relatively easily you know so overall I gave it like 3.75 out of 5 okay guys just got the two books to update for you today the first of those is The Binding by Bridget Collins so I was given slash lent this by my girlfriend by Susie and she read it and really enjoyed it and so she wanted me to read it uh, I've done a full review of it uh, as you can see from like the tabs I still have a few final bits just to finish off filming uh, overall I did enjoy it I gave it like 3.75 out of 5 it was a bit too romance heavy for me I guess because it was kind of a core part of the plot and I didn't care too much um, but I liked sort of the magic system the idea Basically, um, binders go around and they can take bad memories away from people and bind them into books. And um, and the author's kind of taken it to its logical conclusion and then shown the awful things that people then do. Uh, so, for example, there's a guy who's basically repeatedly abusing a servant and then just paying for her to have her memory wiped over and over again. Lots of trigger warnings and stuff. Uh, but overall, yeah, I kind of yeah, yeah pretty good. 3.75 out of 5. And then I read Only You Can Save Mankind by Terry Pratchett. So this was an audio book, um, and this is one of my favourite Terry Pratchett novels. It's quite old school now, it's one of the Johnny Maxwell books, uh, so it's not one of the Discworld books. And it basically follows this like 12 year old kid called Johnny, he's playing this sort of Space Invaders game. And then as he's about to blow them up and like get the high score or whatever, a message comes up saying like, we surrender. And he ends up kind of befriending the aliens within this game and defending them against uh, defending them from the humans uh, it's always been a favorite of mine it's very nostalgic and the audiobooks 4.2 hours long so I pretty much binged on it all in one go would recommend I gave it a 5 out of 5 I mean it's Terry Pratchett man so there we have it those are all the books that I read in October 2020 as always don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye 5 I mean it's Terry Pratchett man so there we have it. Those are all the books that I read in October 2020. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.